Hello, second year students. Yesterday, I started Charles Lamb's essay, The Convalescent, where Lamb talks in detail about his disease he recently suffered from and how his mind and body was being occupied with it. He became a self-centered person who spent most of his time lying in the bed and feeling pity over his sad condition. Now, let's resume the reading. He is his own sympathizer and instinctively feels that none can so well perform that office for him. He cares for few spectators to his tragedy. Only that punctual face of the old nurse pleases him that announces his broths and his cordials. He likes it because it is so unmoved and because he can pour forth his feverish ejaculations before it as unreservedly as to his bed post. So Lem says, he is his own sympathizer, his own best sympathizer and instinctively feels that none can so well perform that office for him. Office that this work, this work of feeling sympathy. Nobody else can so well sympathize with him as he does. He cares for few spectators to his tragedy. Only that punctual face of the old nurse pleases him. He cares few spectators and he cares for only few people who can see him in his pitiful state and one of those few people is his old nurse. Only that punctual face of the old nurse pleases him that announces his broths and his cordials. He only cares for his old nurse who comes to advise his broth, his broth means his soup and other cordials means other drinks. He likes it because it is so unmoved and because he can pour forth his feverish, feverish ejaculations before it as unreservedly as to his bed post. Bed post means the, the pillars of his bed, the supporting pillars of his bed. And he likes it because when she comes he can pour forth, he can pour his heart out, his feverish ejaculations. Feverish means his agitated talk because of fever, out of nervousness and agitation. He talks in a hysterical way to the nurse. He can pour forth his feverish ejaculations before it as unreservedly to as his bad post. He can talk to his nurse as freely as he talks to the pillars of his bed. To the world's business, he is dead. He understands not what the callings and occupations of mortals are, only he has a glim glimmering conceit of some such thing. He thinks himself dead for the world's activities and occupations and only has a glimmering conceit of some such thing. Only he has a faint idea of such things. He has nothing to do with the outside world. When the doctor makes his daily call, even in the lines of that busy face, he reads no multiplicity of patients but solely conceives of himself as the sick man. And when doctor comes to check on him, he thinks he is the only patient he is treating. To what, to what other uneasy couch the good man is hastening when he slips out of his chamber, folding up his thin deucer so carefully for fear of rustling, is no speculation which he can at present entertain. Deucer means his fee, his visiting fee. And the doctor who comes to check on him, he quickly walks out of his chamber to see other patients after receiving his fee. And he thinks only of the regular return of the same phenomenon at the same hour tomorrow. And he thinks, Lamb thinks only about the doctor's return at the same hour tomorrow. Household rumors touch him not. Some faint murmur indicative of the life going on within the house soothes him while he knows not distinctly what it is. He is not aware 
what's going on in his house some faint murmur indicative of life going on within the house some faint murmur means he listens to some low sounds of talk but he can he can't tell while he knows not distinctly what it is he can't tell what exactly it is about he is not to know anything not to think of anything servants gliding up or down the distant staircases treading as upon velvet gently keep his ear awake so long as he troubles not himself further than with some feeble guess at their errands he is not to know anything and not to think of anything servants gliding up or down the distant staircases treading as upon velvet he listens to the sounds of footsteps of servants going up and down on stairs but he doesn't know or he doesn't wish to bother himself in guessing what they are exactly doing what they are up to errands means their household chores their household jobs what they are doing he doesn't know anything about those activities of the servants exacter knowledge would be a burden to him he can just endure the pressure of conjecture exacter knowledge the accurate knowledge of the activities in his house would be a burden to him burden to him he can just endure the pressure of conjecture conjecture meaning the guesswork he can only speculate he can only guess he opens his eye faintly at the dull stroke of the muffled knocker and closes it again without asking who was it he is and when someone knocks at his door gently he just asks who was it and without even carefully looking who visited him he closes his eyes he is flattered by a general notion that inquire that inquiries are making after him but he care not to know the name of the inquirer he is satisfied that someone inquired about him but who was that person he is not interested in that he is totally indifferent about that in the general stillness and awful hush of the house he lies in state and feels his sovereignty he supremely rules in the silence in the hush of the house and he lies in his state in his room and feels his sovereignty like he is a absolute ruler in the house without getting disturbed to be sick is to enjoy monarchal prerogatives compare the silent tread and quiet ministry almost by the eye only with which he is served with the careless demeanor the unceremonious going in and out slamming of doors or leaving them open of the very same attendants when he is getting a little better and you will confess that from the bed of sickness thrown let me rather call it to the elbow chair of convalescence is a fall from dignity amounting to a deposition he says to be sick is to enjoy monarchal prerogatives prerogatives means special rights lem thinks that to fall sick is like enjoying monarchical rights compare the silent tread the quiet ministry almost by the eye only with which he is served here he asks us he asks to compare the life during sickness and after sickness he says the silent tread the quiet ministry almost by the eye only with which he is served he compare the silent walking and quiet atmosphere during the sickness with the careless demeanor the un- unceremonious going in going in and out slamming of doors compare the silent atmosphere with the careless attitude and unmannerly discourteous going in and out of the same attendants when he is getting a little better and you will confess that from the bed of sickness thrown 
let me rather call it to the elbow chair of convalescence is a fall from dignity amounting to a deposition he says compare the compare both the situations and you will find you will confess that from the bed of sickness throne let me rather call it you will accept that your bed of sickness was a royal throne where you enjoyed kingly rights but the state of convalescence the state of recovery is a fall from dignity and that is amounting amounting to a deposition and it is equal to removal to dismissal from his throne in sickness one gets treated like a king everybody cares for a sick man's comfort and privacy and that makes a sick person to feel special like a king but once he gets his health back his kingly status also fades away with his disease so here lamb is speaking of the same feeling dramatically of course where he calls it a fall from dignity almost equal to a dethronement let's stop here i will conclude the essay in the next video thank you for today